representative to NATO and a former permanent under secretary at the Foreign Office. He's with us this morning. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. So uh, there's a, a warrant for his arrest. What difference will that make? Uh, nothing at all to Xi Jinping, uh, who doesn't recognise the International Criminal Court and is very happy with the way things are, I think, uh, with Russia. Suits China very well. So he will continue with his visit as if that didn't exist. Mm. What about for President Putin? What difference does it make to him? Well, in, in his normal life, nothing at all, I don't think, because he's not about to leave Russia, certainly not to go to any country that might possibly uh, take action on this arrest warrant. But it still sends a very strong signal that the head of a major country is now um, under an arrest warrant for war crimes. And around the world, you know, that sends a pretty strong signal that we do not accept there's any impunity for the kind of behaviour that we've seen from Russian forces under Putin's control. I don't think we'll see him in The Hague, in the International Criminal Court, honestly, uh, any time soon. Could it, though, potentially uh, provoke him and therefore prolong the war? I don't think so. I mean, he's already in real trouble uh, in the war. I think the visit by Xi Jinping uh, is very helpful to him. It bolsters him. It shows him he's got an important ally in the world. Um, but you know, I think he's got to now prosecute this war, war crime uh, warrant or not. Uh, I think it's more important the signal it sends outside Russia to other countries who might be thinking of supporting Putin. Mm. What did you make of um, his visit at the weekend to Mariupol? Symbolic. And Crimea as well, of course. And Crimea as well. Symbolic. I mean, mainly a signal back into Russia that he is capable of travelling. Uh, and that he's taking some credit for having taken the city of Mariupol. In many ways, it was pretty laughable, really. I mean, he had to go in the dead of night, nobody around, driving around deserted streets. You couldn't see the extent of the uh, damage and, and desolation in Mariupol. So, I mean, it was a pretty empty propaganda exercise, I think, which won't have convinced very many people outside Russia. Uh but it was for a domestic audience, I'm guessing. I think it was for a domestic audience, and it was to show the Russians that you know, he has got something out of this awful, devastating war. He can at least go, you know, when nobody is around, to this uh, smashed-up city of Mariupol. Mm, you, talk, you started off by talking about the Chinese um, president, as we look at these images now. Um, how concerned does the West need to be about China cozying up to Russia? I think it's a fact that Russia and China both see themselves as in a confrontation with the West. And for the Chinese, it's very convenient, this war. I don't think they're about to do anything particular to bring it to an end. It makes Russia weak and dependent on China, gives them access to massive amounts of Russian oil and gas, and it distracts America from confrontation with China because it involves them uh, in supporting Ukraine in Europe. So I think the status quo serves Xi Jinping just fine. And what's your view? I mean, because it depends who sits there. Um, two schools of thought when it comes to China getting involved uh, in the war in Ukraine with Russia and what the West might thus do about it. Either China won't because they need to sell our go their goods to people like us and the Americans and the Europeans, or actually China doesn't care because they have a, a ready market in East Africa that is developing all the time. I think I mean, this, the China will decide what to do in the base of Chinese interests. Yep. And I think Chinese interests are to keep Russia weak, a kind of vassal state, with cheap energy available, but also not to burn their bridges with Europe or even America. As you say, they have enormous trading interests and they have an awful lot of dollar deposits in Washington. So I don't think they want to get completely on one side of the line or the other. Uh, therefore, I don't think they're going to go all in to support Putin. Personally, I don't see them supplying major weapon systems, you don't. partly because I don't think they would want them to fall into Ukrainian hands on the battlefield and then get to America. So they might provide you know, some munitions or something, but I think it'll be fairly low level. More important, economic support, technological support, yes. Um, so the relationship with Russia is strong. That means that their peace proposals are simply diplomatic wallpaper, frankly. They're not in any position to broker a peace deal. Um, but I don't think that they're going to burn their boats completely with Europe and the West. They've got President Macron of France going on a state visit in a few days' time. They will want to keep playing everyone to Chinese interests. It's 20 years since the Iraq war, can you believe it? Um, yeah. How do you think we should look back at that? Well, I believe it was, in a way, the pivotal event in international affairs since the end of the Cold War. Why? Because um, after a decade in which we'd used our armed forces under Blair for humanitarian good in places like Kosovo and Bosnia, uh, and even in northern Iraq in 1991, suddenly US and UK went into a war without UN authority. I think that both knocked confidence in the West that 
ever intervening again in other people's affairs. It empowered the authoritarians. And I'm afraid it left us in the non-aligned countries looking hypocritical. Because now when we come to say, will you back us uh, against Russia on Ukraine, they say, but you invaded Iraq 20 years ago. So I think we can still see the impacts of that devastating decision today. Um, it's interesting to... I, I, I wonder what our viewers um, think this morning, how they remember the um, Iraq war. I, I know that uh, some of our leaders are heading up to the Arboretum later on today um, to pay their respects to those lives that were lost. Depends who you talk to. Quite a lot of people that I speak to think that it was a pointless war. I mean, at the time, and I was in the Foreign Office I know, at the that's time, why I'm asking you. Um, Blair was absolutely convinced that after 9-11, the risk that weapons of mass destruction, chemical weapons or nuclear material, could get into the hands of terrorists might prove an even worse attack than 9-11. And he and George Bush were convinced that there might somehow be a way in which uh, the weapons of mass destruction they thought were in Iraq could get into the hands of terrorists. That's why I think Blair went to war. You know, he honestly believed it at the time, but we weren't prepared for the follow-up. We did a bad job of the occupation that we found ourselves in, and the region is more violent, more destabilised, more people have lost their lives as a result of the war. So but we were led to believe, though, weren't we, that uh, Britain or British soil could be impacted within 40 minutes? Yes, and that was part of the intelligence that turned out to be dud intelligence. Uh, and so that is part of the reason people are quite rightly angry. I think people genuinely believed it at the time. There was an awful lot of this intelligence around. It turned out to be wrong. And therefore, the whole basis of the war was wrong. The fact we didn't get UN authority put us in the, you know, on the wrong side of the line internationally. And in a way, we've been paying the price ever since. We certainly have. Quick thought, um, perhaps, on Boris Johnson? Well, I mean... That was all, a big sign. <laughs> with all these things going on in the world that we've just talked about, you know, it's a very dangerous, violent world out there. We've got a war crimes conference in London today. To me, this Boris Johnson stuff is really a distraction. You know, he's no longer Prime Minister. Yeah, of course, the Parliament's got to decide you know, what, his, what his future is going to be, but he is not the top story as far as I'm concerned. This international situation is far more important for the country. Good to see you.